Let me tell you why I am so grateful for Reese, my boyfriend of seven years, because oh my god, I have dated some real assholes. What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. I have a juicy one for you guys today. Today I'm going to be sharing a story about how I dated a guy for a very short amount of time and caught him cheating. Then I smashed everything. So before we get started, if you want to follow me on any other social media platforms, that is always linked in the description box down below. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Patreon, all those is linked down below, as well as my email if you would like to reach out to me. It is difficult to keep up with all of the DMs and emails, but I am doing my absolute best. Y'all ready for this one? You're not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get started. Let me set the scene for you folks. Let me set the scene. I was on Magazine Crew, which is um, like the movie American Honey. I will leave the videos explaining what Magazine Crew is in the description box down below. Um, but essentially it's a traveling sales company that travels from door to door and sells magazines, ESPN, Maxim, Sports Illustrated, uh, things like that is what we sold. Children's magazines stuff like that. So the only reason I was on Magazine Crew is to run from parole out of New York. And you know, it was just a crazy time in my life. And as much as I really didn't like the structure of Magazine Crew because I was a dealer. I didn't want to work all day. I made great money, but I didn't want to work all day. I was kind of lazy, especially if it's not something that I'm truly passionate for. Like I am so passionate for YouTube and the podcast and writing my autobiography and everything that I'm doing now, I'm so passionate about it that it doesn't even feel like work, even though I work 10 hour days. <laughs> but regardless, I always had felt that I wasn't, I just wasn't ever happy in any job I ever had. The jobs that I had was only to be able to have money and then magazine crew because they traveled from state to state every two weeks. It was the perfect hiding place for me because I was never in one place for too long. So I was on the magazine crew and I kind of prided myself at this time for being off of heroin. I had been sober for about a month from heroin, but I was like binge drinking every single night, like blackout drunk almost every single night. It got to the point where my boss took away my ID and he's like, <laughs> you look 10, good luck buying Jack Daniels. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Come on, really? By the way, I never got my ID back from him. But just for the sake of the video, one night before he took my ID, <laughs> I was at a bar and we were at this bar that was connected to a hotel. It was kind of sketch and like weird. I don't even really remember what state that we were in. If you knew me from that time, please comment down below. Um, but I, I don't know where we were at. The hotel kind of looked like something out of The Shining, if I'm being honest, like super creepy hotel, super old elevator shafts, super old, like everything was just super, super dated. But I loved it because it had a bar attached to it, so. And I, I got really, really drunk one night and I had just started dating this guy. We will call him Fred. I had a turtle named Fred, not relevant to the story. Okay, so I had just started dating this guy named Fred and we only were dating for like a week, like brand new relationship, maybe it was two. So I had known him for a really long time, uh, like, well, three years, but that was a long time back in my life, back in the day, whole nother world away. So I had gone to Magazine Crew, went back to New York, gone to Magazine Crew, went back to New York. I don't even know how many times. I quit all the time and I was fired. But to keep on track with this story, I had been dating Fred for a couple of weeks and we had this weird relationship before we started dating, before it became intimate. We never really got along that well because he was like aggressive and I was aggressive. So we just didn't get along that well, but for whatever reason, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give him a chance. He was being really sweet to me and I thought maybe this will work. But again, like I am 20 and I'm binge drinking alcohol all the time and all the decisions that I was making were just not in my own best interest ever. But I thought, I'll give him a chance, you know? And we had been dating for two weeks and everything was going okay for two weeks. We'd only kind of gotten, I think at that point we had only gotten in like a fight or two, a minor fight here and there. So one night I'm at the bar, I am hammer drunk. Like I am so, so drunk. And for whatever reason, I decided to go back to my room. Now the structure of Magazine Crew is girls have girl rooms, 
guys have guy rooms. Guys are not allowed in girls' rooms, but girls are allowed in guy rooms. This gives, um, you know, the girls on the crew privacy, so the guys are not at all allowed ever into the girls' rooms, ever. That's like very clear rule of magazine crew. Unless it's like a manager and there's an emergency or something. But there should not ever be a man in a female room. It's just how it goes. <laughs> anyway, I'm really, really, really drunk. And I walk back to my room, I take the elevator up. I think I wanted to grab something, but I was so drunk, I lay down for a second. And I'm a very light sleeper, even in drunk stage. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how I heard this, but you know how the hotel doors are super, super loud? Well, I had heard, what do we call him? Fred. I heard Fred open the, well, I heard someone open the door of the hotel because it's loud, right? And I kind of came to a little bit and I looked up and I saw that it was Fred and I'm like, oh, he sees that I'm drunk and I'm passed out. So it's fine. He left. So he walked in, kind of looked at me and I, I remember waking up a little bit and seeing him, see me. It's like, oh, he knows that I'm just too drunk and I'm passing out. So I went back to sleep. He leaves. I hear the door close. So I pass back out. I woke up around two, three o'clock in the morning. And have you ever woken up out of a dead sleep, drunk, like you feel like something's wrong? I woke up and I had this overwhelming sense of something's wrong and I can't explain it. I don't know how I felt that something was wrong. I don't know what told me go check on Fred. <laughs> I have no idea why I felt that. So instead of just going to Fred's room, I decided to go to the hotel desk and get a key to his room because it's just who I am as a person, you know? Like I was just gonna go in his room for whatever reason. I had already felt as though something was up. I just woke up feeling that something was up. So I go down to the desk office and I ask the chick on duty for the key to his room. Well, I didn't say that it was his room. I said I got locked out of my room and she didn't even check. She's like, what's the room number? And she gave me a key to the room. So I go upstairs and I put the key in the door and I opened it. As soon as I opened this door, Fred jumps up. So he was definitely not in his REM sleep. He jumps up. I see that there's a girl next to him in bed. He meets me They're like, there's this little hallway, you know? Like there's a bathroom right here when you open a hotel room door, little hallway in the beds. So I'm barely through the door and Fred's already getting up out of bed and I'm walking through it and I'm like, oh hell no. I punch him in the face, he pushes me so hard. He pushes me up against the door, he grabs me by the throat, throws me down and I'm yelling, I am mad. I have never been more mad, right? Like there's a chick in your bed, dude. So I go to get back up and I recognize who it is. I go to get back up, I'm super, super violent, I'm super crazy, I'm screaming, I'm yelling. He hits me and another manager comes out, who is my friend, and he comes out and he's like, yo, don't fucking hit her. He grabs Fred, throws him down, I go into the room now. Like, thanks, <laughs> thanks for helping me out because now I'm gonna go beat this bitch up. That was my mentality back then. You're in bed with, why, right? So I'm trying to get back through the door to go fight her and I get grabbed again from behind. And now it's my friend, he's like, calm down, calm down. I'm swinging, I'm trying to break everything that I can possibly find. Now Fred gets back up and Fred is starting to fight my friend and they're going at it in the hallway and now this girl gets up out of bed and shuts the door. I forgot to mention, just to back up here a little bit, as I was opening the door, I took the key latch and put it like forward so the door wouldn't close. I was just trying to be super quiet and he heard all of it. So that's why the door wouldn't close because I, I had taken that lock piece and kind of put it how the door wouldn't lock, you know what I mean? So in all of the commotion, the door did slam a couple of times because I'm trying to get in there and he can't get to it because I'm like, like freaking out. So eventually she gets out of bed and you know, she closes the door. Now I'm in the hallway freaking out, telling her to open the door and other people are obviously waking up and it's drawing a massive scene. Like people are like, what's going on? And other magazine people are coming out and they're like, Jess, what's up, what's wrong? And I'm telling them like, whatever, her, Betty, Betty's in bed with Fred and I'm just crazy, right? My friend that was fighting Fred gets him calmed down and takes me into his room and closes the door. And he's like, calm down. You know that Fred's a dirtbag anyway. Why are you even surprised? So now I'm still coming out of it. I'm still kind of drunk. So my friend's trying to calm me down. My boss comes to the manager's room that I'm in and he's like, what happened? 
And I told him and he's like, sober up, sober up, calm the fuck down. Like my boss doesn't even want to hear it. He's had to deal with so much drama over the years, not just involving me, like it's mad crew. There's drama, there's fights all the time. He is completely uninterested in whose bed, who's in. He does not care. Go to sleep so you can go to work in the morning, sober up, chill out. So my boss leaves and I am just fuming mad. I'm pacing back and forth and I, I start throwing stuff. This isn't even my room. I'm in my friend's room who was another manager. So I'm in, I'm in my friend's room. I'm throwing his shit. Like that's how drunk and crazy I was. And I'm just super, super mad, super fuming. Like there was like flames coming out of my face. I was insane, right? I don't even really like this guy. I had only been dating him for a couple of weeks. Who cares? You know, like, who cares? I don't care. You know, I, I really didn't care, but I was so drunk and so crazy. Like, there was no stopping me, you know? There was no stopping me from fighting everyone. And I was usually a pretty happy and fun drinker, but my temper was always so fast, like zero to prison real quick. And I was always the first to throw a punch for two reasons. One, I'm super small and I can't get many in, right? Two, because if I'm fighting a girl, chances are she's not going to recover fast enough to start to fight me. So I just learned as a female to punch first. You know, I'm small, but I'm scrappy. So I, I have gotten in so many fights and I'm not saying that to be, t I'm so tough. No, I've gotten my ass kicked so many times. Like I have definitely lost my fair share of fights, but this whole situation was just crazy. So the next day I'm still a little drunk and we have to go to these meetings these morning meetings where you get riled up and you do round robins, which is like Matt talked about it in his video. I'll leave it on the card up here. I hated them. I hated them. Couldn't stand them. You're not going to motivate me. I know what my job is. I don't want to scream in a parking lot. So I hated them already, but I go to the office. I'm a few minutes late. Everyone knows about what happened the night before. There's like 40, 50 people in this office and I'm late. I'm the last one in nothing new there. Everyone turns and it's like that awkward, like, oh, what is she gonna do? And my boss was calling out car cards. Every day you got put in a car and you were with that car all day and they dropped you off. In an hour, they pick you back up and they ask you how many sales you have. So he's calling off car cards and I'm looking at Betty who was in bed with Fred last night and I'm so mad I can't even sit there. I'm so mad that I didn't get to fight her and that she disrespected me. And even though I don't even like this guy, my logic was all over the place. So I stood up and I took my chair that I was sitting in and I threw the chair at this girl. Who throws a chair? Who throws a folding chair at another person in a meeting for your job? Like who does crazy stuff like that? Me. <laughs> me because I was so out of my mind. You know, like I, I had a lot of anger issues that I was working through. Substances made it so much worse. So you guys ask me all the time, how did you resolve your anger? How, how are you not so quick? How do you not wake up angry anymore? Because for my whole life, I always remember waking up angry. I was always so angry, always so quick to fight somebody and throw a punch. And maybe I was justified in punching Fred because he cheated and he was a douchebag. But at the end of the day, sobriety, age, knowing that nothing good comes from violence, all of that attributed to me being able to not be so angry, which I'm so grateful for, but it's a learning process. You know, what good came out of me ever punching somebody in the face? Nothing, nothing good came from it. Parole violations, <laughs> nothing positive ever comes from violence. And it's taken me a long time to learn that. And just to go back to my little relationship with Fred, I always thought that that's what relationships were going to be like. I thought that was a normal thing to be cheated on and lied to and assaulted and emotionally abused. I thought all of that was normal. I have never in my life been in a healthy romantic relationship until I met Reese. And I think when just speaking for myself, I was really damaged. You know, I have been through a lot of stuff. So when a damaged person like me <laughs> meets somebody that treats them right, we don't even know how to act. It's like, bro, are we supposed to be screaming at each other right now? <laughs> like, 
what? So meeting Reese and falling in love with Reese, there's, I have no words to describe how amazing it feels to be in a relationship where I'm respected and he treats me so good and you can see that he genuinely cares about me and loves me and it supports me and encourages me. It took me a long time to realize like this is the relationship that I deserve, a healthy, positive relationship that makes you want to be a better person. And I am so grateful for everything that I have in my life. But I thought I'd share that crazy story with you and just let you all know that it has taken me a long time to not wake up angry anymore. And I honestly say that my sobriety was a huge piece in that. Getting sober, looking back at my past mistakes, learning from them, and growing as a person is something I never wanna stop doing. I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm a human, but I am in competition with no one. My competition is me yesterday. How can I be better, do better than yesterday? How can I grow? How, what can I learn today that I didn't know yesterday? And once I started focusing on myself how and how I can be a better person, I started to feel better. I'm sorry if this was super rambly. I'm gonna end today's video here. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you, because there is no wrong way to recover. And I will see you in my next one.